Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today as I go through my February reads. Uh, if you did join me for my previous TBR, you know that I went through some of my shelves, specifically picked up some Stephen King books. I have way too many of his books on my shelves that I have not read. They take up way too much room. So I wanted to make myself feel a bit better about that by actually reading more. Um, I went through, I think I picked up eight, one, two, three, four, five, eight. I think my original video, I picked uh, eight books out. I did add one more novella just because I was getting through them at a pretty, you know, speedy pace. Um, Stephen King and I have had, Stephen King's books and I have had complicated relationship the last few years. His first book I ever read was actually five, like a five-star book. It was, um, what's it called? What's it called? The one that comes before Dr. Sleep about the hotel. They made a movie out of it. I shouldn't say they made a movie out of it. Stephen King, like, I feel like half his works have been made into TV shows or movies. Crap, what's it called? This is really gonna bug me. The guy that murders his, tries to murder his wife and son. I'm gonna have to look it up when I'm done with this because that's gonna drive me insane. <laughs> anyway, that's the first book of his I ever read. It was so good. But the last, like, two years, the books of his that I've read just kind of struggled with. It, I read that and I just, I, did not at all get why people are so obsessed with that book. I read Cell, that was okay. Carrie, that was okay. Some of his short stories I liked. Um, but this month has really reminded me why Stephen King has so many fans and is regarded as such a good writer because I found a five-star book, which is awesome, and I think four, four-star books. And then the rest were three stars. And instead of me starting at the bottom, I want to start actually this month with my favorite. And that's The Outsider. The Outsider, guys. This was so freaking good. Also, this and one of the other books were like the chunkiest. I think this is almost 600 pages. But this did not feel as long as, for example, like I, I have a few of his novellas. Some of the novellas felt longer than this was. This just like I went through so fast. I did not want to put it down. I kept turning the page like wanting to know what happened next. The book begins with the discovery of a boy's body who has been murdered and horrifically assaulted. So the responsibility obviously of discovering who committed this murder falls to the local sheriff. I'd say probably like the first 15, 20% of the book is like a, it's very murder mystery. It's a lot of police investigations. It's a lot of what did you see? Who did you see? What time was this? Let's check the video surveillance, like lots of police interviews, really good stuff. One man in particular stands out as a suspect. I think his name was Tommy. Terry. Terry is a kind of beloved figure in the town. He is a teacher and I think he coaches boy sports, but a lot of people claim that they saw him that night covered in blood wandering around the town, while other people say that he was like, out of state, so it was obvious that he couldn't have done this. And I really like, recently I've been really fond of the books where it starts out and you're not sure, is this something supernatural or is this just like a really clever criminal? I don't want to give the rest of it away because for me part of the fun was discovering kind of which path the book took but there are some twists and turns some things happen people are brought together to try and solve this crime and catch the person or thing i'll leave either option open that did this i really like the characters it brought in a character whose name is holly and I know she has her own book of Stephen King. I have not read it yet, but reading this makes me really want to. I really enjoyed her character. Part of this I listened to as an audiobook when I was out hiking. And I remember I was kind of at this like desolate path and not many people are there and I had my headphones on and it would get to like a creepy part in the book and I kind of glanced behind me. <laughs> so it was very atmospheric. The characters were really interesting. I thought the the murder was the, not the murder, the mystery part of it was really interesting. Um, I loved this book. Five stars. Next book we're going to talk about, Needful Things. This was also fantastic. I really enjoyed this one. And it also feels very appropriate given the times <laughs> in a in a sad, will make you angry kind of way, just because the 
the amount of misinformation going on that makes people go out and do crazy things, it, it just feels very like modern news, modern media. We'll start with the inciting incident. A man named Leland Gaunt arrives. He opens up this little curiosity shop. Because this is a small town and you know everyone, this, you know, causes some waves. People are interested. People start trickling in. And we find out that there is kind of this insidious seduction that, that Mr. Gaunt has with his customers. So I think his first customer is like a 10-year-old boy. And he finds a baseball card from his favorite player and it is autographed specifically to him. A woman who is really, really religious finds a piece of wood from like the Holy Land. Now, Mr. Gaunt does not accept payment for any of these items in the form of cash. He takes favors instead. For example, he asks someone to like throw rock through someone's window or to throw mud on someone's sheets hanging outside, which obviously is not great and it would cause frustration and annoyance, but the effect that these small things have because we're given a view into the kind of petty feuds going on in this town between certain religious groups and other groups, between, for example, like the town drunk and one of the cops and Mr. Gaunt, just like sprinkles a little bit of like powder on those relationships and the town just kind of implodes very quickly, very violently. It was awful to read, but really interesting, awful because I feel like we can see real life examples of this happening where people get wrong information and then act on it and ruin lives but very impactful, very good. Um, yeah, this one was great. Moving from the two longest books to the shortest book I read this month, we have Elevation. First of all, let's all ooh and ah at the pretty cover. Now this book, if I read it and you asked me who the author was, I would not, my first 20 guesses would not be Stephen King because this is not his typical, the, the world is, <laughs> is awful and people are awful and there are monsters everywhere. This was actually like a very moving, intimate, kind of bittersweet book that I was not expecting from him. Our main character, Scott, lives in Castle Rock. Luckily, not at a time when any of the kind of supernatural chaos is occurring. He's a middle-aged kind of pudgy man, very nice very sweet, just kind of living the simple life. He's close friends with the doctor of the town. He does have a little bit of tension with his neighbors across the street, a recently moved in lesbian couple whose dog keeps pooping in his yard and he's kind of tried to be friendly and say, hey, would you mind picking up after them? He's he's really gone above and beyond trying to, to be friendly. But one of the women especially just is not having it, is very combative, and discovers the reason behind this attitude of hers is a lot of people in town don't approve of the two women's lifestyle. They own a restaurant and they might be going out of business just because people decide they don't want to eat there. So he tries to befriend them. Um, and it's, it's this relationship between going from enemies to friends and it's also about his weight. That's kind of the supernatural bit. You can't have Stephen King without some supernatural bit. He, as I mentioned before, is a little heavy, but he starts weighing himself and he's rapidly losing weight, but he looks exactly the same. He's wearing the same clothes. Nothing appears to have changed. This continues and because it is such an alarming rate, he kind of reaches out to his doctor friend and they do some experiments and find out that no matter what he's holding or carrying, he can be holding 50 pound weights in his hand, the scale is going to read the same thing. So it's not that he's losing weight exactly, it's that gravity is failing to have some sort of an impact on him. And as the scale keeps going down, 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 the question becomes, well, what happens when it reaches zero? And it's just this like very sweet, sad, surprising twist because the man, most people would be like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna die, I'm freaking out, I need 
to know what's going on but he's very much like what happens is gonna happen and if i do die i'm just gonna kind of enjoy the time i have left with these friends around me and it's very sweet it's very good i liked it a lot so there's that one next on the list we have the gunslinger this is the first book in the dark tower series i think there are seven books in that series definitely want to continue because this one was really good opening line fantastic so i will say this book is more interesting for the questions that it leaves unanswered than for anything that happens in the book if that makes any sort of sense this feels like a mad max world it is a dry decimated landscape um, it's kind of like old west apocalyptic i would describe it as the main character we have is Roland. He is a gunslinger. Don't exactly know all of what that entails, but he is chasing the man in black. We don't know all of why, but they've got this very complicated relationship and Roland is searching for the dark tower and he thinks that the man in black either can take him to it or knows where it is. As he's chasing the man in black across the desert, he stops for some side adventures in these towns where people go crazy and meets various characters. Uh, he meets a character named Jake who is from this world. I think he was from like New York and he died and then he went to this world. But there are things that exist in both worlds, like the song Hey Jude is mentioned in this world. So I don't know if, is this like a multiverse? I don't know exactly. I've got six more books to read in it. I have a feeling it's going to get really complicated. It has the feeling of that. I can't exactly articulate. Sometimes I, I have difficulty describing why I like a book so much. I just really like the like the writing and the world. It's very you you have the feeling that Stephen King knows everything but he's just kind of leaving these little hints. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if he knew the ending of book 7 or 8 as he was writing the first one. You get the feeling that it's like this huge puzzle and he's slowly turning over the pieces so you can kind of glimpse what the final thing might be. Yeah, it was good. I, I have trouble saying why, but it was good. Last four star read I have this month is The Institute. Now this book I would probably dissect into three separate parts. So the first part we focus on a man named Tim. He's kind of wandering around the country. He was recently fired from his job as a cop through a, just a bad situation. It was no fault of his own really, but Someone needed to be blamed and it was decided that he would bear the brunt of it. Um, so he's kind of just wandering around looking for a, no, a new job. He doesn't really have any, any goals in mind, but just to settle somewhere for a bit. And I probably like come to terms with what's happened to him. The second part of the book, we focus on a young boy whose name is Luke. Uh, one night people sneak into his house murder his parents and kidnap him. They take him to a place called the Institute where a lot of other children are also being held against their will. They claim that this place is for children who have these kind of special gifts and they're trying to develop them through these tests. The only issue other than the fact that, you know, his parents were murdered and he was taken against his will is this Institute is kind of run by a lot of sadistic people and the tests are things like drowning you. <laughs> So it's not, it's not a pleasant place to be. The third part of the book is where the two characters come together and they try to devise a way to free his friends and to take down the Institute. This is one of the ones that also felt like a pretty quick read. You know, it's not, it's not short, it's not crazy long, but it was good. It, it kept you wondering. All right, let's move on to the last four books, which I gave three stars. These weren't bad books. They weren't fantastic books. They just kind of, they were. <laughs> they were, and I read them. So the first one is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. This follows a girl whose name is Trisha. Uh, her parents are going through kind of a nasty divorce, so her mom decides to take her and her brother walking in the woods, I believe along the Appalachian Trail, just for the, just 
for the day, they're going to go outside and be a family and get some fresh air. Only the mom and the brother start arguing and Trisha wanders off and very quickly gets lost. She has about the worst luck in the world because she ends up falling down this cliff and getting stung by all these bees, getting really turned around. And before you know it, she's in a another state. There are hints of the supernatural beast following her, but that part never really felt compelling enough to be a threat. So it's really her resourcefulness, her determination to get through this, the way your mind copes when you're going through something traumatic. All that was fine. It just, it wasn't very scary. Um, even though it's a short book, I felt like it would have been better if it was a little shorter, I guess. But again, it was, it was fine. It was fine. Next, we've got The Sun Dog. This is about a boy named Kevin. Well, kind of about a boy named Kevin. Part of it's about a boy named Kevin who wants a Polaroid uh, for his birthday, something like that. Only thing is when he gets it, there's something wrong with the camera. Every picture that he takes, there's an image of this snarling dog that starts coming closer and closer to whoever's taking the picture. So it's kind of looming larger in the image and it's very aggressive, kind of frightening. But one of the old traders of the town, whose name is what, Pop? Pop Merrill. He thinks it's really interesting and he has a lot of people that he sells products to that are supernatural in some way, but he can't seem to sell this one. So it's this, you get the feeling that this dog is coming after him it just wasn't, I, I didn't really care about any of the characters. I didn't think it was very scary. It just, I was kind of ready to be done this one, I guess. I was more in a rush to finish it than I was wanting to continue. This next book is the one I just added as an extra because I was getting through the others quickly. This was more of like a two and a half read for me and I rounded up to a three and I have a feeling a lot of people are going to disagree with me, which is perfectly fine and that is The Body. Now, Stand By Me, the TV show, not the TV show, the movie was based on this book. It's about four boys, I think they're 11 or 12 years old, and they hear about another boy who died and his body is in the woods and they decide what could be better than walking the 30 miles or whatever to see this boy's body. So that's what they do. I don't get why people like this so much. There were a few good passages in it where some of these boys, they're in this town and they just kind of feel stuck. They, they're of this poor background or they have abusive families and it's, it's this kind of this repetition that no one can seem to break the cycle. And it's very sad and it's tragic, but we only get a few paragraphs of that. So the, the small amount of book that was dedicated to that was very touching, but I would say 90% of this, I just found boring. I don't need to be in 12 year old boys' head that Stephen King creates. I got enough of that with it. So this one, it, it just was. <laughs> Let's get through the last book, Christine. This is about a car named Christine who seduces a boy. Yep. So we've got two best friends, uh, Dennis and Arnie. Is that their names? I think. Yeah, Dennis and Arnie. Dennis is pretty popular. Arnie is not. He's got really bad acne. He's kind of seen as a nerd. Not many people like him. He doesn't have friends. He's bullied. It's a Stephen King book, so of course there must be bullies who take things way too far. Um, but they're driving along one day and they see this old wreck of a car and Arnie immediately falls in love with it. And he's like, I gotta buy it, I gotta have it, I gotta fix it up and becomes increasingly obsessed with this car. That's different. Like, okay, I guess. In the end, this book just didn't work for me because it's a car. Like Stephen King, he does do a really good job at making things you wouldn't initially consider frightening, frightening, like clowns, but it's a car. And as much as I kind of tried to suspend my disbelief and, and get into the heart of the thing, I just couldn't bring myself to be afraid of the car. That's the last one though. But honestly, like 
there were a few that I could have gone without, but for the most part, I found some really good books that I really enjoyed, some series I'd like to continue. I know The Castle Rock. There's like a ton of other books in that series. I need to read Holly. I need to finish The Gunslinger. Like, I think this month was a success overall. So it's been, I feel like that was such a freaking long video. I'm going to end it now. Thank you guys very much for joining me this month and I will see you guys in a week. Bye.